Welcome to The Big Conversation. This week, we're looking at what 2024 means for procurement. So the last four years have been pretty intense, and this year seems it may also be. So what should we be considering as procurement? I'm talking to Tom Mills, a LinkedIn top voice and head of procurement and properties at Bibby Financial Services. Tom, hi. Hi, it's great to be here and great to have the discussion today. As we enter into 2024, it seems right that we start talking about what are the big things coming up. So really good to be here. Brilliant. So Tom, what would you say the state of procurement is going into 2024? First off, procurement is now known. We're not under the radar like perhaps we were a few years ago. So it's no longer the case that you have to explain to your gran what procurement is because your gran's probably heard about it in the news. Now, not always for good reasons. And certainly in the UK, if you think about the recent Horizon scandal and the procurement activity that happened around that, and I've written an article around that, it's become very evident the downsides of procurement done badly. But I think procurement is really in the limelight now and businesses recognise not only the value of procurement, but the necessity of procurement. So that gives us the ideal platform as we go into 2024 to really make a difference in business, but also to really elevate the profession. And that's what I'm excited about going into 2024, really. Actually, that Horizon one, I was talking to my parents at the weekend, and that's something that you can actually talk to them fairly knowledgeably about something that's going on in the news that's in the the documentary series and the dramatisation and there's definitely learnings to be taken there from a procurement point of view, as well as the wider organisational pieces. Yeah, just on that point, and for anyone who's um, joined sort of from a worldwide audience here, you've got a typical scenario there whereby, as I understand it, and obviously I wasn't there as part of the procurement activity in the 90s, but the the vendor was selected because uh, their price was more than 30% cheaper than the other software providers so that's one element whereby um, I think procurement has always be got, got to be looking at we, making sure that we we aren't so driven by price that we miss the bigger picture but then secondly the due diligence and perhaps the cover-up the reputational damage as well considerations and obviously it will take some time for Fujitsu to to claw that back and I'm not making this necessarily about Fujitsu but it just shows that the importance of getting really good due diligence done and procurement's role is is so important not just at vendor selection but in terms of supplier relationship management as well so really yeah, interesting totally. case study example and i guess for me the, the state of procurement going into 2024 i feel it's an exciting time i feel the profession is hitting its stride and adapting to change and it in, in a lot of the, the businesses i speak to it's really seen as an asset to the business it is working at that more strategic level and i think now in order to sort of solidify that position, we just need more investment going into the function around people and potentially technology, if that's the right thing for for the particular function. Just on that point, we've got a interesting dynamic though, because as we face into 2024, I don't think uh, it's going to be easy to move away from the very real need for businesses to continue to drive cost savings. Mm. And I think there's a name, there's a danger that we almost over egg the overall value piece and lose yeah. sight of the, the core basics which procurement have to continue to deliver. There's no sign that inflation is going to go away anywhere, anytime soon. And there's continuing pressures on, on the market because you know the economy is not thriving in many, many places in the world. So therefore, businesses are going to need and, and require procurement to continue keeping a really close eye on the bottom line. And, and yeah. when you talk about 2024 and the challenges, the challenges will be we've started to really show how we can leverage the profession through some of some of the big ticket objectives that the CEO might have around, for example, ESG. Hmm. But those types of decisions need to be balanced with how do we make sure that we continue to deliver against the bottom line this year. And there was a really interesting example. I met someone last week at a, a conference in London who was talking about the procurement it works in the rail industry and the procurement of kind of engines for, for and those decisions being sort of five six years down the line in terms of moving from diesel to to fully electric vehicles yeah. but it's really interesting that dynamic of how much do we focus on cost now versus esg later and i think that balance is going to be key this year to your view. <laughs> yeah it's, it's one of those difficult times isn't it we, we are in this transition phase from 
one way of working to another and and we've got to get to that new way of working very very quickly around the esg side of things but if there's an economic uncertainty piece that there'll need to be a bit of balancing there in terms of cost savings versus additional cost for these new ways of working what do you think the big themes are going to be in terms of macro risks and opportunities and i guess especially focusing this around what procurement people should be doing yeah, well, the big macro risks are obviously you look at this from a global perspective, the continued uncertainty. We've got probably a more volatile environment than we've ever had. Obviously, we've got the continuation of the war in Ukraine. We've got now, now obviously got potential escalations in the Middle East, which will in itself have massive impacts on supply chain and, and disruption there. We're already talking about um, c- certain shipping routes having to divert which will have a massive impact on Hmm. lead times so if you're looking at a global market and looking at the supply chain disruption i can only see things getting more more difficult in 2024 don't want to be too negative but i do think we need to be be a bit realistic here in terms of one of the primary focus of a procurement team and is to look at the supply chain just to make sure that we've got continuity particularly if you're in 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 a kind of big distribution type environment and then if you think about some of the inflationary impacts of the continued impacts on, on things like the price of grain, for example, or the price of oil, we're not going to see any a sudden trend that reverses the got a downward trend we've had since 2020. So I think that brings me back to the fact that the two primary things that procurement teams need to be absolutely laser focused on are continuity of supply and making sure that they've got a really keen eye on the bottom line and making sure that they're able to really support their business to continue to drive some stability. In total, I guess in summary, it's it's a very unstable environment and 2024 is going to be really interesting in terms of how procurement teams manage that. And added to that, you've got, you've got elections. I think it's half the world is going to the polls in, in 2024. That's about 4 billion people. 40 countries. I did have a list of all the the countries, but I think some of them actually probably voted already because we're now three weeks into the year. But that obviously, when you're going through transitions in terms of you know, political transition, that also means that businesses hold back, see, you know, is there going to be a change of regime? And that, you know, that can hamper investment. And obviously, d- depending on how contentious those elections are in, in particular regions, it could be that you sort of have a, a a longer period of uncertainty around that so that, that's another key area it also creates significant volatility in terms of the exchange rates as yeah. you know there's almost a there's a short-term impact um so i think uh, it'll be really interesting to see see that but also just at a macro level huge amounts of avat- advertising revenue go, go into elections i know people like to think that they're kind of all independent and not funded by money, but huge elements of uh, a, a country's economic output is is delivered into funding uh, elections. So it'll be just really interesting to see how that has an impact on the on the economy as well. Definitely, another I think key trend for twenty twenty four has been this whole piece around AI, and I know you're you're very passionate about it, aren't you? So, uh, yeah. what are your thoughts on AI? Well, firstly, I'm not going to position myself as an AI expert, and I would question anyone who does position themselves as that <laughs> although rich if i look on your linkedin and i see that you've got ai expert in your first line then I better I'm take that off regret- now i'm just gonna <laughs> yeah, exactly but um the interesting thing will be what does ai actually mean for procurement individuals in 2024 we've been to some conferences ourselves rich where you can pretty much guarantee that whatever sales stand you get to the tech startup will be talking about how they've integrated with ai ai mm. also being on the other side of the coin where you're almost looking at a situation where there's an expectation from procurement teams now when asking questions as a part of an RFP that there's some kind of AI integration, but I'm not convinced that many procurement teams know what that AI integration actually means and what it's going to deliver for them. So I mm. think this is the year of discovery. I think we've gone through 2023 where we we're almost kind of, I described it as the the grief curve where I went through the kind of denial, the, the anger, and then I went, I'm kind of at the acceptance phase now that AI is going to be a key driver to procurement. Um, moving forward again I'm really interested and I'm really really interested to to hear questions on this in terms of how we actually think AI is going to impact us in 2024 so there's a couple of things that I've been um, considering firstly I've published a couple of LinkedIn posts recently around how we can use AI in our day-to-day as a kind of productivity hack so there's lots of activities now where I'll 
just go on to chat gpt and, and and ask some questions to help summarize a document or to help create a, an rfp document or to help help deliver some key questions that i might want to ask ahead of a negotiation so i think the really tuned in procurement individuals will be using ai from that point of view but then the interesting thing will be if we are investing in tech for procurement um what what is the actual role of ai and how are we going to make sure that we're getting the right tech there's almost a kind of i, I worry a little bit that we we've got a lot of hype around ai but we haven't quite got what what it, a full understanding of what's actually going to deliver for procurement teams i'm going to throw that back to you therefore rich what's your <laughs> view so for me with ai yeah, and as you say it, it was quite a i guess a surprise or a, a shock in 2023 to actually see how far AI had come, you know, as soon as you were able to type something into chat GPT for the first time, you're just like, you know, is this, is this real? This is something that you'd maybe imagined would be the future 20 years ago. So I think the, the technology, it's all, it seemed to catch up very quickly, but then also very quickly, you saw the limitations behind it. You saw sometimes you get these imaginations from it, which so it's quite interesting when you see it, because you're like, you don't quite understand why it's getting that confused. But I think the, the thing for me that's going to really impact procurement in 2024 is actually sales teams are so much further ahead on their digital journey than procurement teams are. And mm. plugging AI into the sales process will just mean that salespeople are able to cover so much more. And and and, and actually, you know, to the extent that they understand what, what it is, what interactions get them a win or a loss and the, the AI is actually able to suggest those interactions to, to the salesperson. So I think procurement will really have their, their work cut out in, in 2024 because, as I say, there'll be so, so much more at the salesperson's disposal in order to sell into organizations. And obviously that goes, it's not just into procurement, it's, it's all around the organizations. And, you know, we, we, we're sort of resource challenged anyway. So it's going to make things uh, difficult for procurement people, I think. Yeah, but it's an not opportunity for procurement to think about how we can use AI to help perhaps automate some of the um, more manual labor intensive tasks. I think that ultimately, if I look at a medium term view of what AI will do to procurement teams, it will dramatically change the shape of the profession. So mm. I think there'll be far more of a um, focus on game changing decisions um, and less of a focus on some of the or, or importance within procurement teams on some of the more um, manual tasks so that's an opportunity um, the big question for mine is also around you know all of our stakeholders within procurement will have access to the same tools effectively so therefore mm. some of the differentiators previously that procurement might have had within a business for example negotiation skills or dis supply discovery ability that can potentially be performed by AI already. So the question therefore is what's procurement's role in terms of differentiating versus the organization? Mm. Does that does that make sense? I think it's a really key key question for me, Rich. Um, yeah, totally. And I think we've the way I see it is procurement have almost got to reimagine what our role is. I do think we've got a really important role, but we do need to change the way we work if we want to kind of really have the impact that we believe that we should do. Yeah. I mean you feel there's been a trend over the last few years that the silos are breaking down within the organization. So procurement is well placed to, to take advantage of that. We bring people together across the organization. We you know, facilitate that, that mental working. So there's definitely a, you know, a key role for us, as I say, at the heart of the business, but yeah. And hopefully that's going to continue and solidify in 2024. Yeah, absolutely. I think one of the things that we really need to do is think about how we develop really better better partnerships with our supply base. I think the key differentiator for procurement will be actually the relationship building with suppliers. So for example, a big part of the next stage on AI is to really understand the pain points and make sure that both sides understand what really is important and what how we can drive for that kind of tech stack together. So I think it will become procurement will become a less adversarial role. It will become more of a partnership role within the business. And I think supplier relationship management will therefore become even more important. No, Rich, you can't have a conversation about procurement like we did today. Uh, we didn't even have AI on the agenda and we're already talking about AI. So <laughs> the question is, you know, I guess the, the big question is, 
you know, 2017, it was blockchain. You couldn't go into a supply yeah. chain interview without talking about blockchain. You, 2013, it was all about the cloud. You know, prior to that, I'm sure it was all about the internet. I do think that AI is going to be game changing, but just how how much and how is is to be determined. And I think there's a danger at the moment that we've almost got so blown away by the hype that we need to almost take a step back and say, okay, but what's this actually going to mean in 2024? And how do we plan for this? And I think that's going to be key for procurement teams. I mean, yeah, I've been in tech procurement for over 20 years. And as you say, every few years, there's this buzzword. Yeah, sometimes it's just renaming something that's already there, but it's slightly snazzy. So cloud when as soon as as soon as infrastructure as a service became cloud it was like suddenly that's something that is on the ceo's agenda and as soon as it's on the ceo's agenda then it's on the cio's agenda and then it's like you know procurement are are involved as well so but yeah you you have these buzzwords from time to time and ai is just another one of those and it's where the technology's sort of the hype's caught up with the the actual technology and yeah you know i think i think all you can say is it is it is as transformational as say the internet so therefore it will have an impact on our businesses and as you say it's it's sort of to, to be determined what that looks like and what that does to procurement but yeah it's definitely yeah. definitely there what about any other trends any other i had something about talent i don't know yeah how we'll see the talent markets this year but yeah well i it was really interesting actually because i wrote a linkedin post yesterday which kind of blew me away the response because i was trying to make the point around perhaps we should be putting more emphasis on recruiting people with zero years of it, procurement experience. Mm. I was expecting the usual backlash of negativity from all the MSIPs trained people who have got 20 years of experience in, in X industry, which by the way is great. But I do think that perhaps if we really want to move the profession on, we need to start thinking about how we attract and recruit talent from outside of procurement. And mm. now that might sound really counterintuitive, but if you think about the key elements that make someone good at procurement it is a that they're curious and b that they have a commercial mindset and that c that they like to um have good uh, build good relationships both within a business and and outside of a business and i don't think you need procurement experience to deliver that no. the other thing that i think that plays into is the real debate around diversity and how do we drive diversity mm. i've been in procurement situations in the past where where it's been almost entirely middle-aged male dominated. And I just don't think we're in an environment anymore where we can afford for that. We need to be looking to attract fresh talent and actually talent from across all all, all age groups, of course. But the key thing is, I think we'll become far better if we get people from outside of the profession. So I think the drive for talent is going to be a really interesting one because I just think perhaps the best procurement teams will be the ones that are truly... um, open-minded in terms of uh, the kind of experience and skill sets that they need tell me if i'm being too utopian on that one rich but it's one that i'm really passionate about no i fully agree with you i think this diversity of thought piece is so important and yeah as you say if you've got a sort of a homogenous culture (laughs) with all the same backgrounds that think in the same way you're never going to get to the point where you're solving problems in a and innovating and being creative in the right way there so yeah, I fully agree with that. And there's things I'm passionate about. The, the, you did a podcast a few weeks ago about the state of gender diversity in leadership in procurement. That's a that's, a, that's another key one where you know, we've got 25 percent female CPOs, and there's a pay gap for those for those CPOs. They get paid 25 percent less than than the male ones, and actually that's not that's not acceptable position in 2024. That's something that we need to be sorting out. So yeah, I, I'm passionate about that one, and I think as I say, diversity of thought across the profession is is important as well yeah it's really interesting even if you look at something like linkedin still the top voices are are male kind of middle age and i think it'd be great to see a little bit more diversity there having said that there were obviously some top voices that were recognized that 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 were women as well i just feel like it would be really great if we just got more diversity of voices on on our social media as well yeah, definitely. No, I agree with that. So was there any other big themes that we need to be considering? I mean, there's a yeah. risk, there's still like sub, cyber attacks, yeah. there's all that sort of stuff. I, 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 th- I think that tw- in my view, 2023 was almost the year on kind of 
butting down the hatches in terms of the cybersecurity risks, those risks won't go away and they'll continue to ultimately potentially become bigger as as, as AI has a, a, a plays into things like you know fraud risks, etc. So I, I do think that risk cost savings and driving efficiencies will be continue to be key things that procurement can't can't move away from. Those are almost the foundations. And I guess the reason I'm saying all of this is because we've got to be careful of kind of becoming too so focused on all the other nice not nice to have, but all the other value ele- elements that we want to drive that if we don't, if we keep take our eye off the foundations and we could be in, in trouble. So the dynamic that will be interesting is I can't see that many procurement teams or many businesses will be investing that much in terms of additional resource in procurement. So mm. it's how do we do more with the same or less? And that's where I think we need to look at, or well, how can AI help us there? Um, mm. So, and, and then in terms of themes, I don't, I always find find it difficult because there's a danger again when you talk about themes and trends that you get stuck on some buzzwords and you end up almost repeating the things from two three years ago. If we look at ESG, for example, it's no there's no doubt that that becomes a continued, almost escalating importance as it becomes key to driving the behaviours of our customers. So, end to end, businesses will continue to focus on the ESG. As I said at the start of this podcast, though, the key for procurement teams will be how do we really make sustainable headway in that agenda whilst con- needing to deliver against all the other things that a business needs to survive in 2024 so i think those are the key key elements from my point of view yeah it's getting that i mean we always talk about balance it it's another one of those things where we've had over the last few years all these extra mis- risks that we need to be mitigating but one of the biggest risks for businesses is that they're getting left behind or not moving quickly enough in certain areas. So you've got the business wanting to move fast to mitigate risk. And then you've got procurement. The procurement process has sort of slowed down over the last few years. And it's sort of, yeah, definitely working against each other from, from that point of view. So I guess it's how we, how we balance that and get the risks understood and mitigated with the procurement and then also move quickly enough to satisfy the business and stakeholders. Yeah, absolutely. So next question, what are you looking forward to in 2024? So I'm excited from a point of view of the opportunities that 2024 presents, given that we're now in a situation whereby the importance of procurement is known. I feel like for me personally, 2023 was the first year that I actually started to properly network. That might come as a surprise to people who've seen me on LinkedIn for the last couple of years, but I was very much the man behind the screen typing um, and, and writing, but I didn't really connect with people in person. I went to two conferences towards the end of last year. There was the one in the Procurement Excellence Com- Conference held in Copenhagen, and there was the one where I met up with you, Rich, in DPW in Amsterdam. Well, I actually feel like I connected at a far deeper level with a few really great procurement individuals. I also met you. And <laughs> uh, it, it, it was it made me realize that there's just so many people who have such passion for procurement and such passion to move it forward. So I'm looking forward to connecting more in person and kind of really developing those relationships and trying to create a bit more community around procurement. So I'm looking forward to attending events. I started to get my mojo back in terms of public speaking last year. So I I did another small talk last week actually on um, AI and its importance in procurement. So starting to look forward to doing a bit of that, more of that. And I'm also looking forward to building out and working with my community on the procurement sub stack. And they'll be looking to develop a, a course, uh, a digital course online around um, soft skills, which I think is really important. And I know, Rich, that's something that you're really focused on as well. Yeah. And then from my business point of view, I'm looking forward to sort of uh, as in Bibi Financial Services, looking forward to seeing how we can start to really look at some of those elements that we've been discussing today and translate that into delivering really good advanced procurement within Bibi Financial Services. So there's a, a there's a real platform that we've laid there and foundations for good procurement, but it's what do we now do to be able to kind of move, move the needle in terms of the procurement journey so really exciting i've said a lot there but i'm just you know i'm almost i'll be honest with you i'm almost overwhelmed by just how much there is to do but it's all good stuff 
Yeah, yeah. I, I find it energizing. Like, I, I like I like to be involved in lots of things. Yeah. And, and yeah, I, I guess from my point of view, for, for what I'm looking forward to, yeah, business Acadia helps procurement teams to get investment in their functions through showing the value that they're actually delivering. And that value could be could be cost savings, it could be value delivery, it could be stakeholder satisfaction, speed to de- speed to value. You know, whatever metric the team needs to be measuring, we help measure. So that's uh, something that I'm obviously excited about. As you said, uh, work with teams to increase their their procurement EQ as well in this soft skill space. It's an exciting year for my wife. So my wife um, is a children's author. She's got her book number five out in April, oh, which is a, a spy in the jam factory. And we've also got some toys that are coming from the Far East, sort of supply chain dependent, I suppose, that are due to land in, in March or April. So that's, that's exciting for her. And another piece of excitement for me, I'm actually, I'm a, I'm a big space fan and I'm very interested uh, and excited to see the Starship integrated flight test number three, which we're hoping to see next month. And if you don't know anything about Starship, it's uh, it's definitely worth a watch on, on YouTube because it is the most uh, incredible space vehicle that I've seen in a long time. So yeah, those are my, oh, my four things. I, I love it. And I've talked all about procurement. I will just mention a couple of other things. There's the Euros in 2024 from a book. Oh, yeah. If, if, if England can't win that with uh, Jude Bellingham, um, then I, I, we'll never win anything. And then there's the Paris Olympics. And I always think sporting events, I'm big into athletics and, and particularly running. So I think that those will really help hopefully create some really positive memories and the great thing about watching sporting events for me is spending time with your family watching them. So it's the mm. t- time I spend with my kids kind of looking at those amazing moments. So looking forward to that as well. Yeah, they bring bring the nation together, don't they? I mean, yeah, so yeah. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a big rugby fan. So obviously looking forward to the Six Nations, which is actually, it's only probably like two weeks away now. I think it's not, not very far at all. But yeah, we'll have to see how, how well England did. They did I suppose better than expected in the World World Cup. So yeah, hopefully they they'll take that into the the Six Nations as well. Yeah, well, brilliant. It's not not long away now. No, uh, and what books do you want to read this year? Books. I always have a big list of books, and to be honest, I feel like sometimes I there's too many books that I want to read, and and I never get around to all of them. Just from a point of view of kind of relevant a little bit to businesses, there's one that was recommended to me by. Laura Sellers, who's an amazing procurement coach, just so love Laura. Thanks. Yeah, thanks, Laura. But it's called Oversubscribed: How to Get People Lining Up to Do Business with You. She Don't recommended you that one to me as well, actually. All oh, right, she's been. Yeah, she's probably on some affiliate commission or something. But <laughs> I will say that I become massively interested and in, and in completely geeked out on on how to set up and create your own business. And I think that's a really important thing for procurement individuals to know and understand anyway, because if you understand the sales journey, then you understand business. Mm. So really looking forward to reading that book. Also, Graham Cochrane, How to Get Paid for What You Know. So I think there's an element of geeking out on some of that stuff. I'm sure that ultimately there's lots of fiction or sorry, non yeah, fiction books that I'll be, I'll be reading too. I just can't think of them top of my head. I'm big into history and most of my books that I read tend to be focused on the First or Second World War. So that's, okay. I'll, I'll just see what, what what comes up next. So, Yeah, so so for me, I've got, the fiction book I'm reading at the moment is Before the Coffee Gets Cold. I don't know if you've ever come across that. It's a Japanese book. I've heard of it. Yeah, yeah. It's, I'll, I'll have to share it in the, in the show notes. And I'm actually also revisiting 10X, which is the Grant Cardone book book yes. and that's it's probably about 13 years old now but 10x is something that so phil idson of art of procurement talks about it a lot and, and actually it's the theme of dpw this year so yeah i was interested to see of, just that. yeah yeah just just get a yeah get, get a deeper view into into what we can be doing in the procurement space around that yeah brilliant i I should just say on books by the way i do mm. listen to audible as well and my younger brother um sent me a gift over christmas for my uncle harry by michael palin and it's really interesting because it's effectively a bit of a, a biography on oh, sorry uh, yeah it's a biography of, of, of a, a long distant rel- relative who's kind of gone back through the archives from sort of looking at all of the history and it's just it's just fascinating you know when you hear mm. tales of someone from the 19th century so i do like to delve into the past a lot so brilliant that's what that's what i'm listening to currently
yeah well th- thanks for joining and i guess before we go obviously as we've said make sure you're following uh, tom and myself on linkedin if you ring the bell above our names you also get advanced access to anything that we post online and tom mills is it procurebytes.substack.com yeah. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. If you do go on Substack and just look for Procure Bytes, you'll find me. And I write a weekly blog as well as obviously a guiding people to where the best content is on procurement as well. So brilliant. And I'm, I'm, I'm also on Substack, digitalprocurement.substack.com. And as I say, make sure you subscribe to the Procurement Conversation as well. But Tom, just want to say thanks for joining us today. Really appreciate you taking the time to, to give us your thoughts on 2024. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Cheers. Bye now.